What do biscuits and bishops have in common? Stay tuned to find out next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased to, for you today to, to, to be introduced to Kay Johnson. What a sweetheart. And she has a most fascinating story, and I'm really excited to have her share that with you. Kay, thanks for coming and sharing. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Where were you it. born? <laughs> I was born in Oklahoma City. Were you? I was raised there until I graduated from high school, and then I went to Memphis. And that's where I met my husband in Memphis. Oh, okay. So, yes, I was an active member of the church my whole life. Mother joined the church when I was seven, shortly after her, her divorce. My uncle was a she bishop. She was converted then to the church, Yes. Huh? My uncle was a bishop, and he sent the missionaries to my mom. And then they came over and gave her the lesson and the lessons. And really, I don't remember a whole lot about anything except... I do remember that they told her she could have her family forever, and after that they didn't have to say anything else because she they could have said anything, she bought, and she would have bought it hook, yeah. line, and sinker because she had just gotten a divorce. She had four kids under the under the age of uh, seven, and so she was looking for a support group and some kind of um, feeling that she could have her kids, and that was that's what meant the most to her. Well, and this was in Memphis. This was in Oklahoma City. This was in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. okay. And so how old were you? Did Maybe you said this already, I was and I'm seven. sorry. You were seven. Mm -hmm. So were you baptized at age eight? I didn't get baptized at eight because my uncle's daughter, the one that was a bishop, she was a year younger than me. So I waited a year because I really didn't know anything about the church. Sure. So I waited a year so I could... Um, I guess so. They thought I would know more. I don't think I knew any more a year later. But um, <laughs> but anyway, I got I got baptized just the month before I was nine. Okay, and with with your uh, with my with cousin. Your cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's neat. So, uh, were you busy and active in the church after that? Then your mom was active. Or? My mom was very active. She was. Um, let's just say, that's where I got my. Uh, she was at least the 20 percent that do all the work, you know, and then uh, the 80 yeah. percent that kind of just sit in the back seat the and warm 20, the seat. 80% mm -hmm. rule, yeah. yeah. So she was. I learned that from her. And so let's just say she's very active to this day. She's 87 years old and she still works at Bishop's Storehouse. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, she's still active. <laughs> And so did you take seminary? And I took seminary. Kind of stuff? I didn't graduate seminary. I uh, got involved in the band and mm. it conflicted. And it was early morning seminary too. So Not the release uh, time And the band was it. early morning. So I had oh. to choose. And so I did the fun one. <laughs> the, the band one. <laughs> band one. Yeah. Well, so any questions about the church in your growing up years that... Uh, Ever, anything ever bother you? You know, Earl, I can't remember ever having um, any real issues with the church. Yeah. I had a lot, I had an, family members that were other faith. And so they would ask me questions and, um, it, and I would go, I would just kind of think like, well, I don't think I've ever heard that, you know. And so I'd go home and it, their questions just got me to thinking some. And so really? I think... And plus, when I was six years old, before my mom met the missionaries, I was Methodist. My grandmother took us to church every Sunday, oh. and I got baptized at age six, held that little rose and sprinkles <laughs> on my head and a certificate when I left the room, and yay, I was baptized. You know, it's like... Methodist. Huh? Mm -hmm. And so my grandma taught me all about Jesus. She taught me the Ten Commandments. She taught me the lord's prayer she taught me jesus loves me she taught me um jesus loves the little children all those little things that you learn in a christian um <clears throat> religion you know she taught to me when i was very little mm -hmm. and so i think all of the, a lot of that stuck with me and so when things my cousins would ask me things and it would come up i would think uh well yeah that doesn't really make sense does it and so i so i did kind of start thinking clear back then but really honestly in the mormon church i i had a good i had a good 
experience in the church. I loved it. I loved doing my callings. I didn't have any real complaints. I wasn't real. I was a little bit of a rebel, maybe. Yeah. And, you had a um, testimony. Yeah. Well, what kind of a, in what way were I, you a rebel? I did, but I, in the way that I was a rebel was if somebody said something that I was different from what my brain was saying, then I would just like, okay, and then not do it. <laughs> like, well, I you know, know you, you said something about white shirts and and uh, yeah, that really bothered me when they came out and wouldn't let my husband wear a colored shirt that I bought him. I went, oh my goodness, why? Made, made you wear a white shirt. Yeah, and so we had to go take it back and get a white shirt. I mean, like, who needs 15 white shirts? Let's just put some yellow in there. Come on. <laughs> um, you know, and when I was camp director, this really bugged me. When I was camp director, I, I, uh, they wouldn't, one of the rules was we couldn't get in the water. Well, it was just a stream an inch deep. It wasn't like we were going to drown unless we had somebody's face under, you know, so I couldn't figure out why why we couldn't be in the water. So I told my girls, I said, hey, you guys, the rule is, is you can't get in the water. Um, but if you trip, who's going to stop you, you know? <laughs> So you were a bit of a rebel there. Yeah, huh? I was. Yeah. I have to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right. Uh, go ahead. Anything? <laughs> no, th and I didn't really. I I tried my best to do do on callings um, and serve because I really felt like I was serving the Lord. I loved Jesus in the Mormon Church. Really, I did not know that He was different. Well, what did you? When you started learning about the Mormon Jesus, what did you think compared to your bringing up? Well, that was way upbringing. later in the game. I mean, oh. I, I mean, I was 56 years in the Mormon church, you know, so I mean, oh, okay. I've been praying to and about and everything oh. to the wrong person for a long oh, time. You know, he waited for me, though. Thank goodness. Yeah. You know that he did that. Well, now, when you got married, you married in the temple. Married in the Salt Lake Temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how was that experience for you? Um. Well, that experience was not the most pleasant because I was four months pregnant because we got married uh, civilly and then came out to oh, me uh, okay. from Memphis to um, Salt Lake, and that's an 1,800-mile drive. Oh, and God. I got really sick the day that we went into the temple, and oh, so so I had to go the second day and actually do all of my work the second day instead of the first day because I got sick the first day. So. Um, so the first experience I wouldn't say was really good, but I have to say after that, um, y y it's just routine. You just go in, you get, do the stuff, and then go home. It's, yeah, I really didn't have any magnificent um, experience in the temple, you know, but I liked the quiet, peaceful. Yeah. Um, I had a really, really busy life. You know, I had a full-time job and a part-time job, at my husband as well. And then we had five children. And so wow, between busy. all of their activities and our work schedules and, and church, act, church jobs, I mean, you know, we barely had time to sleep. Yeah. You know, so. And you worked in Relief Society. Did yes. Did you work in primary? And I, I didn't work in primary too much. I did do the nursery for five years, but um, that's, I did that's not. primary. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I I wouldn't say that I taught one primary class one time, but I, I wasn't really involved in primary too much. I did a lot of Relief Society teaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And any questions ever come up there or, or from the temple? I mean, one thing that I'm kind of interesting now that I look back on it is how much uh, the temple was about me and me being worthy to get there, me, me learning the handshakes and the, all the things that I needed to. It wasn't so much about Jesus. I, I was a little surprised. Now that you mentioned that. that, that's exactly right. You know, you would try to, I'm, I sure hope I can remember everything I need to remember. Thank goodness they have people standing there to help right. you because I knew, I, I knew my, this noodle was getting rusty <laughs> and I needed help. So, um, yeah. Well, I can tell you that everything in Mormonism is is so foggy now. It's, I mean, I can remember everything I did, but for me, it's such, it takes a back seat to everything that I think, everything. I mean, there is nothing more important to me than this and Jesus, you know, come on. It, it's like day and night. Yeah. Well, so what happens after life goes on? You're married and busy in the church, raising these kids, and mm -hmm. what's the next thing that happens? That, well, the next thing that happens is I, well, I, 
actually it's all about you Earl here from here <laughs> you and Carla For the next little bit huh? yeah yeah um, well I posed the question about biscuits and bishops so tell us yes about that. Let's, let's talk about biscuits and bishop okay so I I was looking up a recipe on YouTube for biscuits and um, I mean, I only have 85 cookbooks, but I had to go online and look one up. Thank you, Jesus. And then, um, so I looked up biscuits on, and, and all of a sudden I look on the sidebar, and here's Carla and Earl. And I'm going, well, that's interesting, because I hadn't gone to church for over a year because I had a really deadly MRSA infection, and mm. I'd been extremely sick. So I couldn't go to church. Um, and so... When I saw you guys, I just thought it was something new the church was doing. I didn't. Well, did I, you type in BIS? Yeah. That's how you got to Bishop. BIS biscuit, see, biscuit yeah. recipe is what I put in, and, um, and you thought this was a church thing. Yeah, I I didn't have any idea that it was going to be um, something that I shouldn't listen to. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not kidding you. I thought it was either going to be a juicy story or I was going to learn something. One of either was going to be good, you know. Yeah. So. Um, Seriously, it was... This is an interview that Carla and I did. Yes, and you guys did this interview. And honestly, when I started listening to it, by the time you got through talking, uh, this is exactly the way I did. <laughs> what? It's like, I, I didn't even know what to say to myself, much less anybody else. It was, I was just sitting there dumbfounded, staring at the screen. And then I went into my bedroom and I prayed and I said... I don't know what I just heard. I said, but it just shattered my world. What I need to know from you, what I, what I need is what's truth. And then, so I went back in and I got a tablet and I started writing bullets down of everything that um, seemed important at the time. And then um, went back and researched all that stuff. Cause here I thought if the church has not giving me all the information, then can I really trust what he's saying? So I really needed to go and research the things that I'd put down as bullets. Yeah. And oh my goodness, it didn't take very long. It did not take very long. And so then I prayed again that I wanted, I said, I stayed on that computer sun up to sundown, sometimes only getting, you know, a little bit of rest during the day. And then I just get on it and, and just look for more and more things. Well, um, I realized that I was still missing something. It, it, like, I was missing important things that I needed to know from the Lord. So I went in and prayed again, and I just said, Lord, I need to know truth. I want to know you. How do I get to know you? And all of a sudden, I just picked up my Bible and started reading and Every, I said, I've had a really tough time understanding the scriptures before. I've never wanted to read. I'm so sorry, but it was just <laughs> not easy to do. And so I need your help. And I'm not kidding. I picked up the New Testament and started reading in the book of John. And I was flabbergasted at the things I'd never known. Seriously. Same and so happens. I got a three by five card, started writing everything on a three by five card. And I and I would write how I felt about finding that verse. And then before you know it, before I could even get halfway down the page, here's two more verses I'm writing on three by three by five cards. And pretty soon I'm just got this stack this big, you know, <laughs> like, what am I going to do with these now? And so and so I decided to put them in a binder and I put them in a, a binder and wrote my thoughts about each one of those scriptures and just went, wonder why we never learned this. Why wasn't this ever talked about? Look what Jesus says here. How come that'd be important to know, wouldn't it? And so I would just look at this book and just go, what? <laughs> it was Isn't just incredible to me how it all opened up and became so clear. And yet you carry we carry that Bible to church every Sunday. Every right? Sunday. Okay. Yeah, it was just one of the standard works and Really, I don't think we, I don't remember studying the Bible. We've never had a Bible study in a Mormon church that I can recall. No. And we've never really studied it. There's a manual and you go to Sunday school and there's a couple of verses that you look up and whoa, what do you know? It matches the manual, yeah. uh, the manual's agenda. <laughs> so, so 
I just thought, cool, this is enough till next week. Yeah, you know? every four years we study it right. a little bit. Well, every four years we studied it, but we only studied it for five minutes in each 45 minute class for, you know, once a week yeah. for a year. I don't call that study. I Since I've come to be a Christian, my Christian friends show me what a Bible study is. Yeah. Let me tell you, we go to a Bible study and sometimes you'll take three or four verses and take two weeks to go and through them. It's like, wow. That's studying. Yes, yeah. that's studying. Yeah. So, and, and, and it's really fun too. I, I don't know what I would have done. It, it, uh, at first I called Carla. What a sweetheart. You, are, you have a sweetheart yeah. for yeah, she's a, a wife. Sweetie. And she, she, I called her and I told her what had happened with my biscuit dilly and um, <laughs> and she says let's go to lunch and so we go to lunch and then she gives me a book she says well Mormons have a different dictionary than Christians and this might help you when you have questions mm. so she gave me um, Sean McCraney's A to Z book okay. and then um, and then she says and now just stay in the word and so I said I am every day you know 22 out of 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so it, it, it's just been so fun. Three years later, I'm still in this book every single day, loving every word. You can read John 20 times and get it, and then you'll just keep Learn getting more, more and more, more information. Yeah. 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 Well, that's fascinating. And uh, what a great story, of course, for me, and to have to be able to think that someone would would uh, listen to my story or Carta oh, yes. and my story and be influenced. And hey, listen, every time I God, make biscuits, you guys are, <laughs> I think of you guys, you know, it's like, <laughs> Erskine, you, but isn't Jesus. It, <laughs> God, if he wants to tap you on the shoulder, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's time, isn't it? Yeah, I, that's how God works in mysterious ways, because I've looked online since then and wrote in the word biscuit, and I can't see you guys there. Really? Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you've got a couple of things you want to make sure that you, yeah. you say, and we want we don't want to run out of time before that happens. So, well, one thing that some, I found was some stuff thank there. you. One thing that I found that was important was um, since I allowed myself to look at your video, I think I, that's an interesting way to say it. Yes, too. you allowed yourself. Yes. To to look. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, since I allowed myself to look at that. Um, I realized that suddenly I've just moved from the children's table to the adult table. Mm. I allowed myself to think for myself and I think it's so important for us to realize that we were given a brain for a reason and it's okay to to think to to think for yourself and it's okay. Google is your friend. I don't care what anybody tells you and um um you know it's very important to learn the basics. The basics of Jesus Christ's gospel is who is God, who's Jesus, what is the gospel, what's the key to salvation. He's the only one with any keys, yeah. and he's got the key to salvation. So all those four things are very important. When you learn those, then you think, uh, then you can just about take any verse in the Bible and show everything that you had been taught was um, possibly twisted a little bit, maybe, maybe. Like a pretzel? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think, though, that Mormons will answer that with, well, we can't trust the Bible? If they say What they have you learned about that? Yeah, I, I just tell them, hey, you know, I can understand where you're coming from three years ago. I, I thought the exact same. That would have been my answer three years ago. Yeah. But, um, but now what I've realized is that I needed to go and buy a book that explained where the Bible came from. That I needed to know about the temple in ancient times. I needed to know about these people. Who, what, where, when, why? Why yeah. did all of this happen? Who's telling the story? Why are they telling? To whom? You know, those were important things for me to know. And as soon as I started allowing myself to do this research, to read, study, pray about it, it just came alive. I came alive. It was just like I couldn't stop telling everybody. I was so <laughs> zealous. I wanted, look, I wanted to stand on my roof and shout to everybody, but I can't even walk much less stand on my roof. But, um, you know, it's <laughs> like, it like I wanted to, though. And But I found out that most people don't want to know. Yeah, you know? and, and did you even know the manuscripts that support the New Testament or about um, the Dead Sea Scrolls that support Yes, the, I took a Bible study class shortly after I um, started investigating some of this stuff. I had a lady tell me the, to listen to these DVDs. She gave me a set of 19 DVDs that explained everything. Okay. Yeah. And so I, when that happened, it, it was just like, I can't even tell you how grateful to the Lord I am for 
for answering my prayer the way he did and um, sharing with me the way he did. Uh, before in Mormonism, I kind of felt like Jesus was kind of like the judge with the gavel, you know, yeah. oops, Kay messed up, you know, yeah. you know, and then, oops, she's not quite good. And let's, let's put her over here in this group. No. And then, so when, but as soon as I, he showed me who he was, it, I felt like I was walking side by side with him, be, building a friendship as well as a relationship. You know, it was, it was just, Isn't that special? it's incredible the way yeah. that it changes your thinking about him. Yeah. And this helps because you have to abide in this, in, in his word, Earl, because he says for you to abide in the, in the, uh, his word. And there's reasons for that, that he put that in there. He says for discernment, and also so you won't be uh, led astray and so you won't be deceived, yeah. you know. And so the sad thing about about everything that I've learned is not everything that false uh, teachers teach is false. So there's just enough, just enough good yeah. in them that sometimes that's why it can appear to yeah. man that... Um, that what's being said is truthful. That's why you have to abide in these words so you'll know. Put and it in your heart. And be able to compare that with what comes along later, yes. like a Joseph Smith or temple exactly. ordinances and that kind of stuff. And if it matches or doesn't match against the Bible. Go ahead. Um, I, I tell you, when I would go to church, I can remember coming home one Sunday. And this was vivid as if it happened this past week. But I remember coming home and just throwing my Sunday school books on the couch and my purse and just being so angry because I felt like church was so boring. And I worked all, I worked six days a week, five kids, lots of church jobs. Ah, I wanted church to be something uplifting and motivating and fill me up. But, um, did it put you on a guilt trip or make you feel oh, unworthy did. or did it just boring? You're saying it was just plain boring. Come on. How many times do you need somebody to talk to you about being good? I mean, OK, so we're good. That brings me to another topic. Listen, good is not opposite of sin. I think in Mormonism, I thought being good, you were opposite from sin. Yeah. So therefore, you didn't you weren't sinful. So because you were good, you're doing the check marks. There you go. Doing all this stuff. But here's the deal. Good. Don't go to heaven. Safe. Do. Yeah. So when I, I, why don't we talk about saved? <laughs> Have we ever talked about saved? Uh uh. No. So let's talk about saved. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I can tell you when I pick this book and start reading it every single day, one of the things that was pounded on our head as Mormons is that Christians don't have the plain and precious truth, that they don't have the fullness of the gospel in that, in that, um, they don't want you to read anything that's not faith promoting. Well, I'm telling you what, what is more faith promoting than this? Than reading the Bible. Yeah. Yes. Than reading the Bible. It's incredible. Every single day you'll pick out. I've got little hearts by every verse that's good. Well, now I hardly have any verses without hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Each time you read it, yeah. you add new hearts. Good for and you. So, so I would read it now. I'm going, well... So here was the thing that really, um, really, um, if I had never known anything about the Bible and if I'd never known anything about um, anything in the church, anything negative, if I had never known any of that, but I heard the person that's supposed to be the leader and founder of my religion to make a blasphemous boast as he did in church history, no less. Mm -hmm. It's in church history, volume six, if anybody wants to look it up. Church history, volume six, page 408 and 409. And it's very clear in there that, read that? that yes, and I would like to read that. Um, and, and it says, I have more to boast about than ever any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. <laughs> uh, neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. <sighs> um, you know, the followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the LDS never ran away from me yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing you put that in there. Huh? <laughs> anyway, um, when they came, uh, when they 
when they can get rid of me, the devil will also go. What yeah. is up with that verse? That one. So, you know, when I read that, I thought, okay, well, there you go. Nobody's going to talk about my God and blasphemy him and get and then expect me to be involved in any way. Yeah, that is with what he started. That one influenced Carla a lot too. Oh, it, it, it was just devastating. Of course, when I, I read that um, that my uh, by no means will my word fall away, I thought, hmm, where where is the restoration needed then? Because you know, in Very true. F- five places I know of in the Bible that says that um, that heaven and earth will pass away, and but my words will never pass away. So if his words never passed away, then there was no apostasy. If there was no apostasy, then then I'm going to go with Jesus on this one. He says it doesn't pass away. I'm going with it. That's a safe way. Have we yeah. covered everything that you want to cover? Well, I just Let's feel go. like, yeah, truth really matters. I think that it, 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 I think that we thought we had truth, but truth really matters. And how do you get truth? You study. You have to study, you have to read, you have to allow yourself to come to the big, to the adult table. Did you ever do that when your, when your mother was oh, at, sure. at Easter? I mean, not Easter. The at card a, table. Yeah, <laughs> all the kids sat around the card table yeah. and, and, and then you spoon fed everything. Come on, we don't need to be spoon fed, we're adults. We need to come to the adult table, allow ourselves to read and study and, and search and, and find out for yourself. You know, um, I know that when I would go to church, I, what I was trying to tell you about that coming home and throwing everything down was, was I just felt like I wasn't being, I wasn't being uh, filled up. I wasn't being uh, fulfilled. Yeah. And when I read in Jude, um, it, Jude's only a page and a half, so you, it's not hard to find. You can go in there and you can read about uh, clouds without water. Yeah, I, and I thought to myself, clouds without water. That's exactly every week. I spend three hours there when I'm totally exhausted looking for fulfillment. But all there are is just a, an illusion. Clouds that are there with no substance. Yeah. You know, there's no substance. I was parched. I was lifeless. And then and, and every week again. Where's the cloud with water? <laughs> Living water. That's a great analogy. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, those are the kind of things that kind of ran through my mind and still do. And when I run across scripture, I ask myself questions all the time. I wish I would have. I wish I would have been in the Word a lot sooner, so I could have had these questions. I would have brought these questions up because I don't think there's a lot of them that would have been offensive. Well, it's like you say. You're in the church 56 years, and how yeah. much did we really know? I was in 65. I didn't hear. Yeah. These kinds of things. Carla and I sat at the table, started reading John, just like you did. We were crying. I'd never yes. read those scriptures before. Yes. It was, it was amazing. You know what else is amazing is when I went to uh, my first experience with a Christian church. Well, I went to like four or five before I found one that I was comfortable at. and Which uh, is a nice freedom, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what a nice freedom. Um, I went to one, and I just walked in the back very quietly, sat on the second to the last roll and they have Kleenex boxes everywhere you know and I'm thinking is What's somebody gonna for? cry yeah. you know so so then I I remember they started playing the music and everybody stood up and so I went okay so I stand up you know and then everybody started singing and and what they were doing was they were it was worship music they were there because Every, they wanted to be yeah, there yes so they were because they wanted to be there but the music words were about Jesus yeah isn't that amazing all of a sudden this fountain just turns on and I just like give me those Kleenex you know so <laughs> I reach down and get those Kleenex and this lady comes over to me she goes she goes um are you new and I went yeah <laughs> <laughs> is it obvious <laughs> you know and then, but what great group of, of um friends I have at Alpine Bible in Lehigh they're a non-denominational Bible uh, church and Oh, I just want to give them acknowledgement because they are such a good group down there. Now, you've indicated, and we probably need to kind of start wrapping up, but you've indicated that you'd love to be a mentor. You've had some wonderful mentors Mm -hmm. in your journey out of Mormonism and into Christianity, and you'd like to be a mentor. And so we're we're, uh, asking people if they would like to be in touch with you, that they call, contact me at... uh, Mm -hmm. Uh, through the ex-Mormon files and I'll be happy to get them in in contact with you. Oh, that'd be so super. I'd love to help. I think it's so important. And uh, I think God called you out for a reason, don't you think? And 
And, uh, thank you, Chief. Thank yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, and open our eyes and, like you said, just give yourself permission to think and study a little bit. And Anything you'd like to say to family and friends? I know that sometimes this journey can be tough on family and friends. I think I've said a lot to my family already, but if I could say something that might touch their heart, I'd like to say that we were always told that when you leave the church, then you won't be happy and you won't have uh, any, you'll be miserable is basically what we were taught. And I just, I don't think that's true. I think I'm pretty happy. I've got a wonderful group of Christian friends. I have wonderful mentors when I very first came out, Paula Edens and, um, and my friend Judy Paris. They both really, really helped me out. I, I had questions every day and they would answer whatever I needed answered. And I think it's really important for people to be able to contact somebody who can help them when they have a lot of questions. There's a lot of stuff that has to yeah. be taken and you out. Th and you thought initially that you were the first one or you didn't know. I know. You thought you were the Isn't only one that had come to this conclusion. Well, I thought Carla and Earl had come to it, but I thought, is anybody else? else? It was like just well, this I little group we need to get, way, and we get, would, get busy telling people, know, you know. And we and we want to do that. So, yeah. okay, any last minute? I mean, I kind of gave you that for a second, but just make sure you covered what you wanted to. Well, I think it's really, di really a good point to make is that we open up a giant can of worms when we take this word and say it's okay to add to it or take something away from it. Then anybody is open to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They can they can do whatever they want with the Word of God if that were the case. But there's reasons why God put in His book that nothing should be added or taken away. Because He knew in the last days. It even says in 1 Timothy 4, 2 through 4, that in the last days people will f turn away from the gospel of Jesus Christ to unsound doctrine. Mm -hmm. And they will listen to people that will scratch with itching, itching ears, ears that will, you know, basically. Yeah. So I'm just saying, who is scratching your itch? You know, <laughs> you got to itch. Let only one person scratch that for you. Yeah. You know, don't we don't need religion. I'm sorry, but we just don't we just need, need religion. We need ju Jesus. Jesus and his relationship. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Isn't it a wonderful, you know, have, have great freedom and liberty in Jesus. Oh, yeah. and, and he's he's enough. So thanks, Kate. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.